Okay, just a couple of reminders before we get started. We are going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, followed with questions for the student athletes. At the conclusion for the questions for student athletes, they'll be dismissed. Then questions for the head coach can start. Please raise your hand and someone with the microphone will come around. Please give your name and media affiliation. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address the questions in the room first and get to the Zoom if time allows. Now we'll start with the opening statement from head coach Lamont Paris. Um, well, I'll keep it as simple as I can. It, it hurts to lose, and it hurts more when it's the last game of the year, and it hurts the most when you're surrounded by a group of guys that is a really, really special group of individuals. So um, that's, there's not a lot more to say than that. Uh, if we want to ask about the game, I'll answer some of those questions. But uh, honestly, for me, that's at the so far down the list uh, of things. But um, I understand that's what we're here for. OK, representing South Carolina student athletes are Michi Johnson and Talon Cooper. Questions for student athletes? Right here on the right. Alan Cole, GamecockScoop.com, if you could each take this. When you think back about this season in five years, 10 years, whatever, what do you think people are going to remember about South Carolina men's basketball this year and what you did for the program? Uh, I feel like they're going to think that this was a winning group, you know, changed the program around from the year that they had the year before. Uh, just a great group of guys that just let us play with each other. Meet you want to add to that? Yeah, <clears throat> like Talon said, just a great group of guys, a special group. You know, went into a lot of places, a lot of arenas, um, and a lot of people kind of drew out um, and did some good things this year. Obviously came up short, but um, just can't take away uh, what we did and uh, the group of guys that was on this team, how, the fun we had. Question to the right. Andrew Lyon, a part of Gamecock Digest over on SI.com. Uh, Talon, you know, one of the videos that South Carolina's played throughout this entire season has been you from that moment early in the season where you said it's a new era in South Carolina basketball. Um, how do you feel knowing that you played a massive part of that in your last year of college basketball? Yeah, um, it's too long, by the way. But I'm extremely honored and blessed to be able to come here and put on from a home state. And I give all credit to uh, Coach Paris for that. Uh, but just blessed and thankful for the opportunity that I had. Question on the left here. For either of you guys, uh, John Whittle of TheBigSpur.com, um, what was kind of the basics of the, of the game plan against Jermaine uh, today? What were you all trying to get him to do? And, and what was he able to do to, to kind of combat you all? Meet you want to take that? Um, yeah, he was a good player. Uh, made some tough shots, uh, you know, especially over, you know, over good defense, contested defense. Um, you know, and he made, like I said, he made tough shots. You know, good player. I mean, he tried to contain him as much as we could in downhill. You know, he's a strong, strong driver. Um, but he shot the ball well today. Um, like I say, he's a good player. Question on the right, right here. Brooke Pryor, ESPN, Talon, that half court buzzer beater shot that you had. What's going through your mind when you let that one go? And did you feel like it was money when you, when you shot it right before half? Uh, no, I didn't have no thought. Uh, just kind of let it go and see where it did, and it just went in, and I just kept running. Question back, right? Uh, Matthew Theodros, Duquesne Duke. What do you think was the biggest difference in that second half that allowed Oregon to make that a large uh, advantage in the second half? Meet you want to take that? I mean, yeah, they were just, you know, hitting tough shots, uh, getting the ball down inside, um, maybe some offensive rebounds, you know. Uh, they shot a lot of free throws as well. Uh, so, um, I mean, they, they hit some tough shots all night, honestly, um, play played pretty well as a team, um, you know, and that's that. Question left right here. Madison Hurts at the State. Michi, this was a season that you talked about where you were wanting to find the right pieces. And knowing the journey that you guys have been on over the last two years, what has it meant to see those pieces kind of fall into place in the regular season and be able to kind of see what you guys can actually look like after after your first season with Lamont? Yeah, I mean it just goes goes to the, the coaching staff and you know what they what they were able to do, uh, bringing in the, the seniors and the you know obviously Colin stepping up big you know later on, 
um, you know, like I said, it really just starts with them. You know, they believed in us um, since the jump. Like I always say, I remember Coach Shannon telling me, you know, I came back on my BJ Mack visit. We got a chance to go to a Final Four. Obviously, uh, today was the last day, but they always believed in us when nobody else did, and that was why we was able to even get to this point. So it just really starts with them um, and their belief in us. Questions for student-athletes? Thank you. All right, please raise your hand. Someone will come around with the microphone. Questions for Coach Paris. Right here on the left. Yeah, if you don't mind just kind of touching on the basics of what y'all were trying to do against Jermaine today and, and slow him down. And what, was it just making tough shots for him? I mean, there was a lot. I mean, I, I wish we had, I wish we had found a way to slow him down better. Uh, Buddy went five for nine from three. Like one's in transition as he's dribbling up right in front of us, and you know, seven for seven from the free throw line. And uh, he was aggressive going to the basket. Um, and I think a, a few of those. I mean, he hit a floater against his own that we fouled him on. Um, he makes tough shots. He doesn't average 40, but he makes tough shots. Uh, and I think it was set off by the fact that he went five for nine uh, from the free, from the three-point line. I thought that was that really ends up making that scoring effort into that scoring effort. If you if you go, you know, it's hard to get there on twos. But when you go seven for seven from the free throw line and five for nine uh, from the three point line, then something like that comes into it. We looked at a couple of things, you know. Uh, we went zone for a couple of possessions just to try to slow down the ball screen a little bit, and then they they got an and one off of a floater on that, and then uh, and then out of our double team they reversed it out of our double team, split the double team and kick one more for a three. So then I just, you know, our energy wasn't quite as good in that. So we, we ended up staying man to man. But he was aggressive and he and he had a good game. He had a good game. Uh, we're normally really good defensively. Um, he had a good game. Right, first row. Nick Lawrence and Major Madness. Coach, I know you've touched on it all year, but last year it was obviously a tough year, year one. This year, you were competing for an SEC title, and you just played an NCAA tournament game. Just encapsulate all that and speak about how special that is to have this team and to do that this year. Yeah, I mean, I think one, I think one day here in the next couple of days to a week or whatever, all that stuff will start to set, set in on what we actually did. When you're in the, when you're in the midst of it, it's, it's hard to do that. You're, you, you know, someone's going to tell you, Hey, you you did this. You had a winning season. You're locked into a winning season, or um, you're locked into a winning SEC season, or you got double figures SEC wins first time in for however long. Like they keep coming, they keep coming, and you're just so locked into trying to do what you need to do to try to give the guys this opportunity right here, which was our ultimate goal. Um, and so um, it's it'll set in here in a couple of days probably of what we what we what they really did. I didn't do a whole bunch, but they did a lot of things this year. And so, uh, yeah, that'll 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 set in here over the next couple of days. But it's you know it's hard to hard to think about that as much right now when you're really just worried more about your guys and how they're feeling. Questions for coach, right here to the right. Alan Cole, GamecockScoop.com. You've obviously been a part of a lot of teams, a couple Final Four teams as an assistant. What made this particular group so unique to coach over the course of a season? Um, I, I mean, I think it all stemmed from – it started with who they are as individuals. It's, it's such a high-quality group of human beings. It's. It would be hard for me to overstate that. That's – relative I've done this a long time 
it's such a high I think it started there and then I think when you then it's how they interact with each other because you could have great guys high quality guys that it just you know is it just doesn't translate when it comes to how they mesh together and it did it did in an incredible way um, and so that really was that really is what made this group able to do what they did on the basketball court, you know. If you look, certainly our guys were better than what people predicted they would be. But they also probably weren't just the best individual talents at every position that we had. Um, but they were winners. They are winners. Um, that came together. They're incredible, fierce, incredibly fierce competitors. And they came together with one goal. Um, and they did that in a way that each of their individual abilities shined. Um, and so having been around some other teams that have done this, it's, it's not the basketball, I mean, in my experiences, it's not the basketball component of it that allows you to do this. It ends up these other things that ultimately manifest themselves in a basketball game, but it has very little to do with how fast our guys run or how high they jump or the passing or shooting or there's very little to do with that. And it certainly isn't because I have some magic play, but it's it, 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 it always starts from within. And this group had all those characteristics and then some. Last question, back right. And David Cloninger, Post and Courier. Uh, Lamont, you've spoken so much about this team and uh, getting this kind of success. Now as the page turns, how, how much of a challenge will it be to replicate the success and, and keep this kind of thing going? Uh, well, I mean, to replicate the most wins in school history, that'll be difficult. We could be significantly better next year and, and, and have a worse record. That's the reality of it. Um, so that's why you're always trying to identify – uh, the the means by which you will gauge success, um, and it's and it's not just what the record is. Certainly, ultimately, we'd like to be playing back in this tournament again and, and put ourselves in position to do that. Um, uh, I think that's the real challenge. I mean, it, it, it's a real challenge. If you look, I, I think I don't think I'm making anything up, but I think we had had nine NCAA tournament appearances in school history before this, so doing it with a level of consistency has been a challenge. Um, and that will be a challenge for us too. But I, I, I'll tell you from a foundation standpoint, um, on paper, this is 2024. So, you know, we'll see what happens at the end of the season. But on paper, I mean, I like, really like what our foundation looks like. and. And I, and I think more importantly than what those individuals are as basketball players, the culture that we have developed, uh, the, the way in which we work, the way in which we interact, the way in which we're co we, we respond to coaching, all that stuff, is it, it, that stuff could not be in a better place. And so I'm extremely optimistic. That's why I decided to come back. I love it at South Carolina. I love our guys. I love the people I'm around. I love the other coaches. I love who I work with. And there was a lot of speculation about a lot of other things that were out there. Uh, and so it's no accident that I ended up right back where I am. And it um, hopefully displays the, the level of belief that I have in not only what we're doing as a staff, but uh, just in, in who we're around every day and, and what I believe that looks like moving forward. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.